Welcome back. We're going to be taking a look at circular motion and how we can calculate the forces involved, uh, the accelerations involved, and they're a little different when it's in a circle because we have to take into account the, the situations that come up. So let's just dive right in. Here is a, a graphic representation of how it can look. Um, the yellow, of course, is the <laughs> the orbit, if you will, if you want to think of it that way. You could have a rock tied to a string, spin it around your head, or a car can go drive through a roundabout, and we can try to calculate the friction between the tires and the road, or we can say, what is the centripetal acceleration? Uh, yeah, there's a lot we can do. So let's, let's just dive in. I'm not going to... Uh, derive the equations for you, but rather how do you use them once we have them. The derivation comes uh, in a different video, so now it's just application. All right, the centripetal acceleration. Uh, in your books you have a formula that's like this. Don't worry if it looks a tiny bit different. Every book is unique in this. So the acceleration is the part that we're going to use later when we're going to be using good old Newton, and this will be that, okay? I'm not going to go into too much detail before we uh, look closer at the pictures, but our situation will be just a circle, and what is happening as you go around it. So we have one equation there. Here is another one, and this is when we're after the force involved because as you know say you're spinning a rock around your head with a string you know that your hand is pulling on that string and then the rock uh, pulls on your hand via the string okay you you can feel there's this uh, pulling going on in in order for the rock to go in a circle you're always having to apply the force so that it keeps changing its direction so every little snapshot you had it would it would be because you're applying a force and that that goes via the string or if you're driving a car uh, the friction that uh, gets transferred uh, the the force to the, the tires and then to the car and of course to you um, so let's let's just take the next look here we know that uh, good old newton always likes to get involved with things like this and you've known this for about two years now at least, that uh, the force is equal to mass times acceleration. Our only difference is, is that, see, we got the one force going there, but then when the part comes around, it's always a center seeking force, centripetal, uh, but it, it changes for every little step that you're taking or for every little part that you're wandering. And the acceleration, well, that just comes right from the equation, just like before. But of course, just keep in mind, when it's circular, it's just, it's just a little bit different in the application. We're, we're very used to the linear ones, but uh, I think we'll have fun with this. So let's take the situation where we have a car. It's uh, 1,250 kilos, driving in a roundabout, and it's uh, traveling 50 kilometers an hour. That's a little fast for a roundabout, I must say, but all right, <laughs> we're going <laughs> to, yeah, uh, we're going to be needing to change just a couple things. Uh, as per usual, we'll need to fix that, uh, and we'll need to turn it into meters per second. But let's continue. So, as usual, write down everything you know when you're solving. I know this is a simple problem, but get into the habit of it. It's necessary. I've color-coded as usual. We have our mass there. We have the velocity now. I've changed it. You can see that there. All right. And the radius. So also, draw a picture. Put down the formulas that you might need to use. I went ahead and put both of them down right here. Uh, and then if you end up not needing a formula, at least you have something ready to go. And you'll, you'll learn from the experience. Okay, we've got a good little picture. I think we're about ready. And here you can see the force of friction. So guess which formula we're going to be using. 
I'm sure you've guessed right. Okay, since it's a force we're after, uh, the force of friction and the tires, you know, the tires between the street. So as the car goes around, the tires push on the street and the street pushes back equally. But because we are going in a circle, we need to make sure that we're using the proper force equation. And since this whole thing was about <laughs> centripetal force and centripetal acceleration, uh, this is the one that we'll be using. All right, it's really straightforward. Once you have this and recognize the situation, you just start plopping in the right numbers. So here we go. And because it's color coded, you should be able to follow this really quickly. And because it's force, it's it, Newtons. And let's just clean that up then. Uh, we didn't have too many significant figures, so let's just go ahead and take that down to the, the two there. So 8,000 Newtons, that's, that's what the force of friction is. And uh, I'll tell you, you wouldn't want to be the one applying that force. There's a, it's amazing what tires can do. They, they're really kind of sticky and that they, they don't slide as much as uh, in the olden days. So uh, be glad for that. If you have to apply the brakes, it's really good tires can handle that kind of thing or we'd be hitting a lot more people. So, okay, I hope that helps and I'll see you next time.